We are a people of faith, and we are atheists. We are revolutionaries, we are Democrats. Some of us are radicals, some of us are pacifists, some of us are in between, some of us are in Standing Rock, some of us are in New York City, some of us are tuning in online. We make up a tremendous diversity, and frankly, we need to get so much more diverse, so much broader, so many more millions. And I want to just reiterate, in one moment, we're bringing everybody back on stage, and we're going to send off together. But if you are a student, you have the mission of your generation. You have to rouse your generation now. If you fought in the 1960s, if you sat in, if you freedom rode, if you stopped a war, if you burned your draft card, if you said hell no, get back out here. If you are, if you are like the growing numbers of Jewish voices with families and memories of the tattoos on the arms of people who were put in concentration camps, if you are part of a fraction who can tell that story because so many were lost, raise your voice now and do not let anybody sit back. If you are like the Japanese Americans who just did a march through downtown LA, who said, we remember the internment camps and we will stand with our Muslim sisters and brothers. You need to bring that energy into this now. If you are giving money to all the important groups that fight for abortion rights and reproductive justice, who fight for civil rights and for the movement for black lives, if you are giving for people who are doing services for immigrants who have to endure the horrors and the terror that is rippling, shockwaving through immigrant communities right now, you are right to do it, but think of the, di the difference to give everything you can right now to stop this, not to try to survive it, because millions will not survive it. Most of you here and most of you watching know you're not Rosa Parks and know you're not the four who sat down at the lunch counter and no, you're not the ones who led and started, started Standing Rock and no, you didn't do all those things. Some of you did, but a lot of you didn't. But you know what? None of them did it before they did it. Right now, history is calling and it's calling you. It's calling you. It's calling every one of us. And nobody here, don't let yourself tell yourself that myth that lie, that inexcusable rationalization that I'm just one person, that I'm now, I don't have significance, that no one listens to me. If you tell the truth, if you tell the sober, cold-eyed, terrifying truth, and you are willing to put your body behind it, put your name behind it, put your stature behind it, then you will rouse the sleeping, the terrified, the anguish. There are tens of millions of us who are looking for direction right now. You will rouse them, and you need to become a leader of them, an organizer of them, and we will help you. We have different people with much experience who are in this movement. We're building a national office. Move to New York and volunteer. Sign up here and volunteer. Organize where you're at. We have 32 days. And what you do in the next 32 days will have a greater bearing on the future of humanity and the planet than almost anything you can imagine doing if we sit back in 32 years after this regime, if we allow it. And that's not an exaggeration. Andy Z gave the analogy to Hitler. Many people, that's what I'm going to close with, but many people have heard and many more need to hear and take to heart the essential lesson that Pastor Martin Niemöller gave. He did not resist the Nazis. He ended up in a concentration camp for eight years. He said, first they came for the communists, but I didn't speak up because I wasn't a communist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak up because I wasn't a Jew. Then they came for the trade unionists. Then they came for this one. By the time they came for me, there was no one left to speak up. That is a lesson we have to take on board now. But the other thing that I want to quote from him, very few people have heard. And he said, listen, 
He spent his life after he survived the concentration camps. He traveled the world, and he said, if we had risen up in the beginning, before Hitler crushed the resistance, before they jailed people and executed and tortured communists and others who were protesting and dissenting and put a chill throughout society, if we had stood up, he said, maybe 30 or 40,000 of us would have lost our heads. But think of what we would have prevented. Now, I'm not trying to get anybody hurt, but I'm trying to stop a world of hurt. And no price is too high to pay right now to stop with this fascist administration, with this fascist regime, with this theocratic, war criminal, genocidal, woman-hating, vicious regime has in store. And we here tonight, and everybody watching, we are starting tonight. You better be signed up. You better have plans to get involved. Yes, do it in your way, but do it with everything you've got and stay connected and make everybody you know get involved. In New Year's Eve, we're going to steal the headlines of the world. No, in front of Trump properties around the world and here in New York City.